you imagine how much time out of your day it takes to join public shade tree committee meetings to just disrupt them? <laughs> that was funny. I'm glad you found it amusing. You were the target. <laughs> so I just want to let everybody know as you come in that we are being recorded at this stage of the, the meeting. You're muted, Henry. Uh, there are no other attendees. Everyone from the committee who's going to join today seems to be here. Um, Alan, have you started recording? Yes, we have. OK, so the meeting is officially in progress. Uh, welcome, everyone. And that was a good uh, tree hearing. Uh, let me find my notes. Of course, I can never know the radio. Quickly check the agenda. All right. Um, I think what I'd like to do for hours is if everyone would put your hours in the chat, that would save us time on doing that. Um, and approval of the minutes is the other next thing. Minutes from the May, whatever the date was, uh, May 9th meeting. Do we approve them? All in favor? Okay, they're approved. Aye. Great. Okay. Um, and then next on the agenda. Hold on one second. I get a little more organized. Uh, chair's report. I don't have a ton to report. I did speak with um, Mindy. I emailed Mindy and Joe Comerford about the four ongoing um, state regs, state uh, bills to deal with trees. And Mindy, of course, right away, I saw her at the Puffer's Pond breakfast and she's our biggest fan and is totally in support of all of those. Um, I think what I wanna do is maybe write a letter to the editor of the Boston Globe about these four issues and tell people to contact their Congress people because that's probably more where the issue is. Um, so um, I will sign as chair of the, committee here so that that might spark some other committees so anyway um i will promise to do that before next month um she's great she also reiterated that if we need money for a special project she has a contingency fund and can use that money get us that money okay, there's four things in the chat hold on oh that's the hours great okay thank you everyone Um, and what else do I have? Oh, um, I've been listening to this, a podcast called This Old Tree, which Ben had put in the newsletter. I think it's great. Um, they had a program on the Charter Oak in Hartford. I mean, every, you drive through Hartford and there's like six different things named the Charter Oak this, the Charter Oak that. And so now I know what the Charter Oak is. And the original Connecticut Charter was signed there and then scurried away so that the British didn't come and try to take it back and destroy it. So it's a historical shrine also. Um, the tree is no longer standing, but this, the historical stories based on a tree, but it's, it's much wider than the tree. There's another talk about this tree that used to be on Broadway, but it goes way beyond when the tree was cut down for widening, widening not Broadway, one of, the, one of the highways, one of the roads in New York City. Um, so it's a fascinating podcast. There's a lot of episodes. Um, so yeah, oh, Chris. Oh, Chris, who was here earlier, he, I think, is Brit's student. So that's good that he was here. Hope he joins us again. And I wrote up an individual tree request policy, which we can talk about a little later. And Sarah, thank you for the Outdoors for All Act. I did contact people about that as well. I think that's a good thing. Um, I think that's all I have. So, um, Vice Chair's report. Yeah, thanks, Henry. I also 
listen to that podcast, um, just a little bit of it, uh, slowly on my ride to school each morning. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I got a delivery of um, a variety of different trees, uh, I believe four of them. They are relatively small. Um, that a resident dropped off saying she couldn't plant them on her property uh, as a tenant. Her landlord might not have wanted that. And I said, I'd be happy to take them. And she was grateful for that. So I planted those on my uh, in my yard this weekend. Um, and then I think there was one thing about bird habitat uh, in the email that I also responded to and a, uh, and some stuff on that. And then there was also someone who I just noticed Henry responded to related to uh, a lot of trees not leafing out this time of year. Um, Second more with the anthracnose. More with anthracnose, yes, that's true. Yep. Um, so yeah, that is, those are the main things that I have noticed. Um, I also, when we did our, uh, our planting uh, right downtown, we noticed that uh, one of those trees, the magnolia needed some pruning. Um, it's not in poor health or anything. I believe Alan told me that that's just regular maintenance pruning. So if anyone from the public uh, is curious about that when they see it uh, driving or biking or walking into town. Um, yeah, I think that is, those are my main updates for tonight. Thank you, Julian. Uh, Treasurer's report. No update. OK, thanks. And Alan, Tree Warden's report. Um, oh, excuse me one second. Bennett, are you taking the minutes? I am. And did you take the minutes on at least the what the decision was that we made at the hearing? I didn't, but I can. Okay, if you can remember it, otherwise we can go over it again. Let's go over it again before we leave this meeting. That'll be good, yep. Okay, yep. Okay, so go ahead, Alan. Uh, this should be a quick one. Um, so we had the award ceremony. Britt and I went to the Tree City USA award ceremony in Greenfield at the Greenfield Community College. Nice ceremony, great presentation um, about uh, urban wood utilization and also a sort of a forest health update um, which uh, was very informative. Um, so we're 36 years, Tree City USA. Um, nice photo op that we can use in the paper uh, to publicize the work of the committee and why we maintain a Tree City USA um, status. Uh, grants, so um, just an update on the grant. So we wrapped up the Emerson History Museum, here's tree grant. I just have to get that information compiled and sent back. And then uh, we did receive an extension for a year on the tree inventory. So um, we have a year to complete the tree inventory and urban forest management plan uh, component. So that's a, a big relief. Um, Alan, um, just a quick question about that. Does that mean that training, volunteer training for the committee is back on the table? Yes, it is. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's something we should can try to coordinate to do this summer. You know, if people are going to be around, uh, maybe instead of doing a work day, we do a, a um, tree inventory training day. Yeah. So sounds good. Um, yeah, we're, we're um, tree crew. Remove the mostly dead sugar maple tree on the North Common, North North Amherst Common, um, where the multi-use path sidewalk project is going down. And we took down the, the Norway maple that had the tree hearing this winter. Um, we transplanted uh, two trees, um, which is all we ended up needing to transplant, which was nice. Um, then uh, I've been watering those. The, the elm that we transplanted uh, didn't like it, and we're watering the heck out of it, trying to keep it from going into shock. But um, it's not, the leaves are not fully hydrated at this point. So 
keep a close eye on that. That project's moving forward very fast. Um, is this the hazelnut tree? No, this was, uh, it was an elm, a Princeton elm. Uh -huh. um, hazelnut, we didn't have to move. So right, okay. Stay. Um, I did hear a lot of flack about this from people. Yeah, there, uh, my understanding is there, uh, the concern is around the project itself um, and what's going yeah. on there. So. Yeah. The Kellogg Ave project, um, first phase of the Kellogg Ave project is done. So the tree preservation, tree protection that we did there, I think was very successful in protecting the root zone of the tree and the trunks of the tree. Um, we've managed to prune all those trees that were first initially impacted by the project. And there are two remaining large pin oak trees there that we need to try to get in and do some pruning on um, before the next phase of the project starts. So the next phase of that project is from North Pleasant Street along the Unitarian Universalist Church sidewalk there to, um, to um, the parking lot there for, um, it used to be Rayo's Coffee. <laughs> it's now a, a taco restaurant, a nice restaurant there. Um, so there's a short section of sidewalk, two large pin oak trees in it, and we need to prune those. That's where the rubberized surface is going instead of um, the asphalt up against the trees. So we're going to be our first attempt at using these porous rubberized surfaces around the trunk root zone area of um, trees. Um, They've been successful in other municipalities in doing this. Cambridge uses it all over the place um, around trees and we've had good luck with it. So I have a colleague in Schenectady who loves them. Um, they've had a lot of problems with pl planting trees and then having the trees be ripped out of the ground, destroyed, vandalized. Um, and so that's a big concern just about like safety and, and cleanliness and keeping the, the trees they plant in the ground and they use that rubberized surface and they really love it. So that's another yeah. pro. Good to hear. Did, um, you didn't use it on Kellogg Ave though. Well, this is, we didn't use it on the other side of the street. It wasn't proposed. It's only proposed to be used near these two trees because we don't have this. We can't maintain them. Um, ADA compliance on that side of the street without doing something like this. So we're, um, that's why we're using it in, this, in these two locations. So um, there'll be asphalt and then a large, you know, like 12 or so foot long stretch of rubberized surface and then asphalt. And then we get close to the next tree, there'll be another stretch of, of this rubberized surface um, for the sidewalk. Um, and that's um, pretty much it. We um, did a lot of tree work before the Pomeroy paving project took place, we had to take down the remaining dying ash trees on Pomeroy. Um, and then we have some more pruning to do on West Street, west of Pomeroy for the sidewalk. It's gonna be part of the roundabout project that's going on there. Uh, we pruned the trees on the other side of the street and took down the dead, excuse me, took down the red maple that was also up past tree here in New Haven. So um, tree crews in the cemeteries, you know, three days out of the week. Uh, so the tree work is dropping off. So that's it pretty much. Okay. All right. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is the presentations and discussions. The Mary Maple Love Letter exhibit will postpone for a month. Since Britt couldn't make it, she went to a, she, her daughter's favorite uh, performing group, had a concert tonight, and so she went to that. Um, the individual tree request policy, did everyone see that? I did not, I'm sorry. I'll share it with everyone now. Just hold on a second. not coming up. Oh, 
Okay. Nope. Is it long or is it something you could read? I could have to find it. I thought I had it on my desktop to share, but it's not appearing anywhere. Hold on one more time. Definitely not on my desktop. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay. Um. Henry, in my notes, I'm going to say that Henry fumbled around for several <laughs> minutes trying to find the document. Great, thanks. Okay, it's coming on now. And uh, hold on, I can get it into a good place where it's easy to share. Oh, okay, that's not it. Here it is. Um, I will share this in five seconds. Ready? Share screen. Is it big enough? I'll do it bigger. I should be coming, not home in, but. Sorry, um, Henry, what is this? Um, this, sorry, can you just? Yes, if people, <laughs> we've been getting scattered requests from people right. requesting a tree. And we used to always provide that and we stopped providing it. But the requests keep coming in and Alan can't really do that. So we talked about this last meeting. And um, anyway, I said I'd write something up and so I did. So this is my proposed policy. And when we get a request for a tree, what we do. Any comments? Um, my first comment would be um, to just say the tree warden as opposed to Alan. Because people may not know who he is. So um, the first sentence, when new requests for trees from individual property owners come in, might be one way of putting it too. Um, and it should be property owners rather than residents, right? It needs if you're if you're a resident of an apartment building, for example, you couldn't do that. That's okay. I worked it out in my head. I could write, I could add to this so we could just know this that if we get a request from a renter, that we then have them contact the, the landlord. And we're talking about trees. We should determine whether we're talking about trees in a public way or trees in the setback. I, I would. Yeah, that right. was my I point. Think, yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing because if we get a request for an individual public tree in front of someone's property, that is a little different in the term that like 
a renter, a neighbor, anyone could really theoretically request that without needing any sort of permission from the landlord and they should be aware of that, right? Yeah, I don't need permission from a adjacent property owner to plant a tree in the public way. Um, but we do need permission from a property owner if it's going to be a set, setback planting and we have a form that they would have to fill out to, to do that. I think we need something on here about, you know, what if somebody wants a tree for their backyard, you know, for their own, I mean, we want to say that the trees, we only accommodate requests for trees. Um, yeah, that are shade the public way or something like that. 30 feet from the public way. Yeah, some type of, you know, we're not going to put trees in somebody's backyard. Right. It, it has to sort of conform with our mission. The, the distance is 20 feet, according to uh, the law that allows a tree warden to spend funds on private property in a setback planting. So 20, 20 feet is the distance. Okay. I think you need to define ROW. Well, I'm going to put it, I already put in right away up here. I'm going to put that there. Oh, all right. Now. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that also with the. Uh... And I, um, instead of saying we will, the public shade tree committee will try to accommodate them. Okay. I can be really obnoxious and say I, I can put this in the um, in the active voice if you want. So you know the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee um, will try to accommodate new requests for trees from individual property owner. You know, just if we want to be more grammatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think rather than do all the editing. As a group, maybe um, if you don't mind, I will send this to you and you can finalize it. Sure, happy to do that. Mostly, I was wondering if I'm on the right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, if people support this. Um, that is another question I had. Um, could we put something in here? Um, um, something like the, the, the tree committee appreciates donations or you know, if if the homeowner cannot afford it, then we will use money from the tree gift fund, or you know, something along those lines. That's what it says we will use money from the gift tree fund. You could say homeowners, if financially able, are encouraged to assist in purchasing the tree. How about we will use money from the gift tree fund and request donations from the homeowners? Are donations appreciated but not required? I don't know. We don't want to. If... Okay, good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, another question I have is. This will seem much easier once we have our nursery up and running and thriving. Um, do you think, w I just don't know how many requests we get on sort of an annual basis, if we can actually accommodate the number of requests we get. We don't get a huge amount. Um, okay. It comes in waves. And that's why I wrote that um, if we start receiving many requests, we'll use the second Saturday planting. Okay. We're not going to get more than probably more than two in any month, maybe four in May or April. Okay. But if we got 10 or 12, you know, that would be a huge amount. So 
We, I, I believe we only got two last month. Okay. So I'll send this to Bennett in a minute, that. and I'll send it to Ellen to write a final policy. We'll discuss it next month. Sound good? Okay, and I know Ellen, you need to go soon. So let's oh. um, get back to, I'll stop sharing the screen. Okay. Um, Back to the agenda quickly and see if there's anything that has your name on it. Um, the town tree tour. Um, we haven't done anything on that at all, have we? No, we haven't. Yeah. Okay, so we'll pass on that. Second Saturday plantings we'll talk about a little later. Town budget line item we'll talk about later. Uh, UMass interns is Brit. The tree nursery. Uh, well, any of these issues on the agenda? My, I, I just had a question about the line item um, in the budget. Did that get approved or is it still up for a vote? I believe it was passed with the rest of the budget uh, last night at town council. Oh, that's if fabulous. They pass, if they pass the budget, which I don't know if they did or not, but if they pass the new fiscal year budget, then they likely pass that as part of uh, the budget because they look at it as a package, not as an individual uh, type line item when they look at the budget. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, that's great. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, all right, uh, so let's just go in order until you have to leave then, Ellen. Um, Second Saturday planting. First of all, how many hours of volunteers did we get there? How many volunteers? Not from the committee. Two? Um, I think hours? Rona and then um, we had a new volunteer, Lori. Yep. How many did they work the whole three hours or? Mm -mm. Uh, no. We, we finished up around 11.15. Okay, so I'll give them each two. Yeah. And they were both adults. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, good. And it went well? All the trees got in? Very much so. Yes, good. Okay. I apologize for missing it. You're muted, Ben. What's that? Bennett was saying something, but he's muted. Oh. <laughs> Can we unmute him? Okay. Um, next on the agenda, uh, the tree nursery. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think we have a good site, you know, off of Station Road. Town property, water supply, some fencing already installed to keep the deer out. Um, now it's just be a matter of, um, you know, this late summer purchasing some grow bags and some watering systems, something to keep them watered, and uh, and then purchasing purchasing the trees probably, you know, as bare root tree stock um, in late fall and doing a um, a late fall planting in the nursery. I have one question. Um, not sure if we touched on this before, but is the town considering that site for new DPW, new fire station, affordable housing, any sort of development that might interfere? I'm not aware of any development okay. there. The, the town, the property actually belongs to the watershed. So it's okay. part of DPW, it's part of the watershed. Um, right. And uh, we're not actually going to be, you know, I think the system we're going to be doing, we don't really, you know, plant these trees in the ground. We're planting them in grow bags that are going to be recessed in the ground with mulch around them. Um, Perfect. So okay. Using, we won't be using native soil. We'll be using compost. Um, okay. Things like that. So. Great. Thank you. We just need to work on a species that we'd like to plant in our town. Something the committee can discuss. How many trees, first of all? 
50? Well, I mean, you know, so we want to plan this so that we have, you know, X number of trees that we can plant every year. So some species grow faster than others. Um, so if we want to plant, you know, 10 trees a year, then we need to, you know, space these out year after year, you know, planting um, so that they mature to planting age, you know, unevenly. If you don't want them all getting to the right size the same year, so. Um, right. We also might want to work on installing some fencing or at least fixing the fencing already there to help keep uh, deer and other animals that might eat the trees out. Yes. Species choices. I think, um, you know, we've had a lot of success, success with oaks. <laughs> They're, you know, some of the larger native trees that aren't um, currently in danger <laughs> from some kind of pest or climate change. Um, you know, so uh, oak would definitely go, swamp oak, white oak, um, any other hardy trees, you know, red oak, um, red maple, you know, always a winner. How about hackberry? Hackberry probably would work some locations. Mm. Don't want to plant beech, don't want to plant ash, don't want to plant sugar maple. Sycamore, you can do sycamore. Um, just people have to realize that it's, you know, a, going to get a sycamore thracnose in the spring and not leaf out until the conditions improve. improve. Um, I'm, I'm thinking all big shade trees. I'm not thinking smaller kind of. If you want to select some um, other nut trees, you know, we could do that. Shagbark hickory. Mm -hmm. Pig nut, shagbark. Um, well, if we're going to grow a nut, it should be an edible nut. So, <clears throat> is, pig, is pig nut edible? I don't think so. I think it's kind of bitter. Okay. Why it's for pigs? I've never tried. So, yeah. So, it's something we can all, as a committee, as the committee and I, can come up with some species and check on availability and get an order put in for fall. Okay, let's think about it a little more and uh, finalize the list for sure next month. I, my suggestion is we do 12 of each kind and try to plant 12 out each year, or six of six kinds, but do 36 trees. A lot of work and, going through. Go ahead, Sarah. And, um, I'm just, I just wanted to say, I think oaks are a great idea because they're really beneficial for a lot of different species. Um, and they, they do really well, I think Alan said. Um, and I guess I have, my, my instinct is to plant things that are hard to find, that are, that are bigger that we might want as street trees, like species that are more, more difficult to come across, mm -hmm. um, that we couldn't just get from a nursery. And I, in that vein, I'm kind of wondering if there's any merit in looking at things that are, um, Developed to be narrow. I can't think of the word right now. Columnar. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. columnar varietals or like things for hard spaces where we might want to put a tree that's difficult. Um, or Alan, if you have any recommendations for species that do well in a very narrow planting belt, mm -hmm. um, or if there's any merit in maybe doing 12 of a smaller species if we could plant under power lines or something. So I'm just trying to think of difficult areas mm -hmm. where we might want to plant trees that we could have trees that were growing specifically for those conditions. Okay. So, you know, large growing to medium sized growing under power lines sort of species for narrow root zones or reduced root zones and other areas for larger root zones. Yeah, exactly. And I can do some research too, um, but. Great. 
let's do that research and finish next month on this. Any other things before we switch? Um, before Helen goes, I want to do two things. One is go over the uh, decision we just made. But the other thing I want to do is turn this around and show you the table. Oh, wow. Is that from the Mary Maple? That is the Mary Maple table. Wow. Yes. That's Beautiful impressive. job. Yeah, that looks great. It's what did you finish cool. it with? Uh, I didn't finish it. It was finished with eight coats of uh, some kind of polyurethane, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's got There's a little uh, bow tie that's keeping it from cracking more. And mm -hmm. that's made of walnut. And the base is made from, I think she said sugar maple, but I don't remember, some kind of maple. Yeah. So Beautiful. Sure. Yeah, so lovely. I would so love cool. to put like a Mary Maple exhibit together with things like that. I think that's just yeah. such a great use of the sad I, situation. I completely agree. And even possibly if we could, offering or holding a place where people can buy or even give away some of these artifacts uh, that local artists have created, if we could. Yeah, Brent and I were talking about doing that. Um, it's it's a, a matter of you know reaching back out to all those people who we took pieces and said they were going to make something out of it. So um, nice work in progress. Definitely. Awesome. All right, and then um, yeah, so we need to decide what to do with it. Finally, I mean, if we have an exhibit, that'll be the first use. <laughs> so um, let's review the decision we made in the tree hearing for Bennett's notes. Yes, and for me, um, if anyone wrote down this, I did not, in that meeting, I was not taking notes. It didn't even occur to me if anybody had the exact language or if we, I mean, I think we all know the gist of it, but um, I'm guessing nobody wrote down the language. We just kind of came up with it on the fly. I I believe I didn't write it down, but if my memory serves me well, we decided to uh, vote to advise the preserving uh, of the tree in that location. And if not possible, uh, seek compensation at the uh, $90 per uh, inch di of diameter at rest height rate. That we agreed to. It sounds right to me. Yeah. Okay. And give me the, and Julian, give me the reimbursement amount per inch or whatever that was. I uh, ninety dollars uh, per inch uh, diameter breast height. DBH. Yeah. Correct me if that's incorrect. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Do you need right. me for any votes or anything? Otherwise, I'm gonna. I don't gonna think we have off. any other votes. Um, okay. We still have a quorum, so thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Good to see everyone. Nice night. <laughs> All right, you too. Bye bye. Um, so not too much more going. Bennett, you mentioned you were gonna. I uh, did. Try to do a stab at the native tree policy. Yeah, I'll have it to you tomorrow. I just been on my list the whole month, and I just. Thought it'd be so easy and just never did it. Uh, and I realized it 30 minutes before our first call today. So um, anyway. Okay, no problem. We'll yeah. do it next month. Um, the town tree inventory, it sounds like that's moving ahead. Um, what more do you need from us right now or just for us to- Well, we need to, we need to schedule a time for uh, training. So again, if we want to do that in July or August, um, instead of a work day, we could do that. Um, I can arrange for the training. Um, and then I need to you know, get the people, <laughs> somebody to do the actual inventory uh, for the rest of it, whether it's going to be a, another intern or a private contractor to finish up. Right now, we, are, we have 700 and over 750 tree points that have been updated or added um, to the inventory since last June. Um, 
and I have started the, the urban forestry management plan, but just need to dive back into that and get more of it completed and then get it out to the committee for review and get it out to the other departments, planning department and stuff like that for um, review. Okay. Um, I think the simplest way to pick a time would be to get a list of dates from the guy who would do the training. Send it well, to I mean, I think our date, our date is the second Saturday of either July or August. Um, okay, can he could do those? He or she? I suggest we go for August. It always seems like July is often still an okay time to plant, and August is sometimes oppressively hot and dry. Let me look at those dates. Um, I've got a show on August 12th, but I might, uh, I don't know what time it is. So if it works for everyone else, that'd be fine. So August 12th. Does that work for a tentative date? Sorry, I'm looking. Yes, works for me. Okay, I'll see what we can do. Great. Okay. Let me just check another calendar. It works for me too. Okay, we're on for that then. Um, the Histor History Museum, did the work on the tree get done finally? Yep, work's done. New trees planted, lighting protections installed. Um, so we're good to go. A little bit of cleanup work to do. Um, and we were gonna do a big mulching around the tree too, right? Yeah, we, I just got to talk to the, the Emerus History Museum around that, see if we can pull that grass away from the trunk. And okay. They're, they're going to be stuck maintaining it. Um, so if we put a mulch ring around it, then they have to keep that weed free mm. versus just mulling it. So. Okay. Um, library trees, I guess there's nothing new on that. The state level initiatives I already talked about. So there is something new on the library trees. Oh. Um, so I reached out and they weren't able to come to this meeting, but they're going to be in touch about maybe coming to our next meeting. And they're trying to put together um, basically like an Amherst community outreach program. And we are one of the committees that they're going to talk to, but they're hoping to have um, Berkshire Design, who's doing the landscape as part of the um, renovation, speak to these groups and it would be Rachel Lockler who used to be on this committee. Um, so hopefully we'd be having Rachel um, and I don't know if there's any, gonna be anyone else from the library committee specifically, but hopefully we'll be having Rachel Lockler from Berkshire Design come and speak with us. Um, and I will keep you updated about what meeting they'll be able to make, um, but uh, coming soon. Thank you. Okay, uh, significant tree ordinance, as I mentioned, I spoke with um, uh, Mindy Dom and that's moving along and I'll write that letter. And then there's one more thing in the agenda, which I already forgot. Uh, the solar bylaw group, Julian. Yep, they met the last time, um, not last Friday, but the Friday before then I believe. Um, and I attended that meeting they're still in the process of drafting their bylaws. Their recordings can be found um, on both the town website and I believe Amherst Media also puts them on their YouTube page. Uh, and yeah, not many updates specifically. There is a solar study that's been launched that they're encouraging the community to fill out. Uh, so if you haven't filled that out, just a reminder to do so. I sent it. Uh, in our last meeting, I believe. Okay. And there was a good letter to the editor on um, yesterday's paper about it. Oh, I did not see that. I will have to look for it. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think it was, it was yesterday. So, All right. Any other things we need to discuss? Henry, on the agenda, you had social media on the agenda. 
Ah, yes, I must have missed that. Um, I just want the reason why is because um, the town's social media person um, reached out to me and wanted to know if there was any any questions or anything um, that the committee might have, and I, I think it would be a good idea. Um, the committee is very active on social media, and I think it'd be nice if uh, maybe at the next meeting we invite her to attend the meeting to give you an update. Sort of the town has a, is they're working on a new handbook for the social media and all the guidelines, things like that. Um, so I think we're good to invite her to the next meeting if she can attend. Um, That's great. And maybe um, have her contact Julian ahead of time. Sure. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I. I might even see some advantages in integrating our social media with the town social media. That way we're a little more officially connected to them and we could also get uh, some of their, some of our events advertised on their base, which is significantly larger given that they have the Amherst alert system and all those type of things that we could theoretically work with. I will do that. I didn't bring that up on the agenda, I think, because Shoshana is not here and she doesn't seem to be very active in the committee. She posted or somebody posted the work day, but nobody posted the meeting today. So I did it. Um, OK. But yeah, I don't believe I have access to the Facebook. So whoever did that, thank you. OK, I can uh, try to figure out how to make you a co-host on the Facebook page. That would be great if you wanted to send me an email or something about that and I can look into it. OK. Actually, I'll do it as soon as the meeting's over. So then if you need to get a phone call for a code, you, the code will come to, or well, it'll probably come to my email or it might come to the committee email. If it comes to the committee, yeah. email, you can get it. That's anyway. perfectly fine. I would probably end up doing it tomorrow, given that I have finals uh, to study for. Uh, I could probably do that tomorrow afternoon. Okay, tomorrow... I'll be hit or miss. Call me before you do it. If you, you know. Okay. Really, whenever works, just shoot me an email and I'll try to get it resolved. Okay, good. Great. Anything else? Thank you, Alan. That's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's awesome. I think it was a productive meeting. And um, it was nice having the guy from Belchertown. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.